Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be discussing a very interesting and uh, offensive aspect of Ninjago's past and the process of actually making Ninjago way back in the day. Now, earlier this year, we made a video talking about how Ninjago changed Wu to be less offensive and consider this video to be sort of a spiritual sequel to that video, but essentially what happened was Master Wu's early voice and the early auditions for that character were definitely culturally insensitive, uh, stereotypical, offensive, politically incorrect, whatever type of label you want to throw on that. And uh, the reason why we are making this video right here is because I found the original audition. I have no idea where this originally comes from. I just happened to find it while scrolling through Instagram. And uh, let's play a little bit of that early audition just so we can see what uh, could have been <laughs> what horrible abomination could have been uh, let's take a listen long before time had a name Ninjago was created by the first Spinjitzu master using the four weapons of Spinjitzu the staff of quakes the nunchakas of lightning the shurikens of ice and the sword of fire. Weapons so powerful, no one can handle all their power at once. When he passed away, his two sons swore to protect them, but the oldest was consumed by darkness and wanted to possess them, yes. Yeah, so... Wow, I, I can't believe that was almost the reality for poor old Master Wu. Now, like I mentioned in that original video, uh, one of those voice lines of the original audition or the original voice that they had for Master Wu, one of those lines made it into the final product for the pilot episodes. That, of course, is this line right here. Father would not want you to do this, brother. And I'm sure a lot of Ninjago fans recognize that line. It's pretty iconic for being super weird. And yes, like I said, that is the only example of the original Master Wu voice making its way into the final product for Ninjago. But can you imagine the entire Ninjago series having Master Wu sound like this? I'm really glad they decided to go back and change this and re-record the entirety of Master Wu's voice. Sure, that one line kind of slipped through the cracks, but still, they managed to go back and change it. Thank goodness, I can't imagine a reality where Master Wu sounds like this. Ninjago probably would have been received very differently if this would have been the reality of the situation. Thankfully, they went back and changed it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video. Nothing really too crazy going on here today. Just a very, very strange example of Ninjago's earlier days not being as thoughtful as the modern day Ninjago setting has been. But what do you guys think about all of this? Feel free to leave a comment comment down below discussing what you think about the original Master Wu voice and of course the current one. Do you think Ninjago would have been a very different series if that original Master Wu voice was uh, kept for the final product? Leave all your thoughts down below and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. That'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's video, feel free to like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys again very, very soon. Peace.